Hey guys, it's uh, Andy here from Evertrek. One thing we get, we get asked a lot and I, I want to go over today is the types of equipment that you're going to use when you're on um, a trip like an Everest Space Camp Trek. Now this is uh, is quite a lot of gear here. I'm going to show you exactly you know what I take. Um, now this is the gear I do take to Everest Base Camp. I've been there many times. Some of the things here I've you know, I didn't take in the beginning, but over time you learn that you, you sort of need certain things and vice versa as well. There were things I took in my very first trek to, to the ones I take now. So, um, yeah, I just want to go over some of that. Some of them, like uh, I've got some crampons here um, and some um, big winter boots. You might not need on the classic route, but you might need them on, uh, say, the Gokio Valley or the, uh, the Three Peaks Three Passes track, just at certain times of the year where it's icy and you're going to need to put crampons on. Okay, so let's start putting things in the bag then, shall we? Firstly, I always put my, these are my winter boots. These are Mammut's uh, Trovat. They are really good. Maybe a bit overkill, if I'm honest, for the classic route. Um, yeah, they're quite rigid, so they're perfect for crampons, but these are, I use these in the UK all the time. Um, but I do take these with me if I'm going on, say, Gokyo Valley. Uh, the Three Peaks, Three Passes track, and even uh, at the lower end, I'd use these on Island Peak. So they go in the bag. Now these are my, uh, I've used these uh, twice now on Everest treks. Uh, they're the North Face Hedgehog GTX. They're really good grip, really comfy, Gore-Tex, so you don't really sweat. And these are your best friend on a trek to Everest. Uh, these will look after your feet. I highly recommend you get these. Um, but they go in. Some of the next things are, um, you know, my trousers. So these are, these are really good. Just basically long trousers. They're very breathable. Um, if it gets super cold, you're probably going to need a base layer under that. But... This goes in. Um, I use this on, on most days. Um, and I take actually a couple of those. So these are just a couple of uh, crag hoppers. One of these has actually got a, uh, an, an insulated layer. So actually, I've worn these at base camp in winter um, a few years back, and it was perfect. So they go in. Right, they go in. Then it's a sleeping bag. Now, we get asked all the time, actually, you know, what type of sleeping bag we use. Um, now, this isn't an extreme winter sleeping bag at all. It's, it's borderline four seasons. Um, you know, three season is perfect. You know, if I was camping on a, on a, on a mountain, um, you know, like Island Peak, I probably wouldn't take this. It's not that warm. But it's perfect when you're in the tea houses. And this is the thing. People do think that, you know, they need all the gear, uh, you know, really, really warm gear. But you're going to be in the tea houses. Now, the tea houses are quite warm. You're going to have blankets and duvets there as well. So some people just take liners. But I do take a sleeping bag just if it gets really cold. So I've got some different types of socks here. Um, most of these are merino wool. Some of them are not. They're just normal. I think these are just cotton, but I don't really wear these hiking. They're just for the evenings. Um, just when I'm walking around, uh, you know, just chilling out. But when I am hiking, I make sure I use merino wool because then my feet don't sweat. So they go in. Then I've got my, uh, so we're done with the lower half there. Let's go, let's go with the upper half now. I've got uh, a few different types of jumpers. These are like a mid-layer fleece. Um, very good. I, I, I do take a few of these, actually, um, just if I, you know, if you start to sweat. After a few days, you get that smell, but these are, these are great. So I take three of these. Uh, one of them, yeah, none of these are hoodies. This is like a gilet type uh, fleece, but they go in and they're, they're perfect. While we're on the upper body, I've got a couple of base layers here. Now these are, depending on, on, on the temperature, if I was going in, say, November or March, maybe to the beginning of May, I'll probably use this one, which is slightly thicker. Or well, if you go in the winter, I highly recommend this. So this is my Rab. Uh, this is my Rab uh, Al Pollard, I think it's called. Now, it's brilliant. It is brilliant. It is, 
you know, I've worn this in the cold. It's, you know, if I sweat in this, it's dry within an hour or so. It's unbelievable. And this one's just a, a Berghaus um, base layer I use. And I wear this when it's slightly warmer. So sometimes I just wear that uh, hiking during the day. In the evenings, you know, it's a completely different story. You want to make sure that you're getting, um, you know, something like this. So this is my North Face, uh, sorry, my Rab jacket. Um, now, I normally have another jacket as well, my winter jacket. Um, it's just getting repaired. But that would go in there as well at certain times of the year. But this is perfect. Um, you know, this is it's sort of great. It's about minus 10. So Rab jackets are perfect. You chuck that on, you feel great. Um, right, we're certainly clear in the table. Okay, now normally I do take a couple of different pairs of gloves. Now these are... Um, you know, insulated gloves, they're perfect, um, especially in the evenings, you know, at certain times of the year you need these. And these are just take the edge off gloves. They are, um, you know, they're perfect. These are Rab Baltoros. Um, they're, they're really good quality. Um, and they keep your hands warm. It's one of the important things, you've got to keep the extremities, extremities warm. Um, okay, another sort of couple of jackets now. So again, We've talked about fleece uh, and all about layering now. So you've done, you know, you've got the base layer, you've got the mid layer fleece. Uh, this is sometimes I, I put this on. This is just a little jacket. Uh, it's like a windbreaker. So they're perfect. I do chuck one of those in. But my main jacket, the one I wear when I'm hiking in the UK, is this Gore-Tex jacket. This is a Berghaus uh, Extreme jacket. It's very good. Um, practically bomb-proof. But if there's any precipitation, this is, this is the one, it's, uh, you know, I don't feel anything with this, but the reason I wear uh, this jacket is that if I do sweat, it just wicks away and I don't feel it. It's great, it's, the technology is amazing, so I always take one of those jackets. It doesn't always rain in Nepal when you're there, uh, maybe September potentially, um, but even if you get some snow, or even if you're not, you're just hiking, that is perfect. And I've got a couple of things here, so that's a slightly thicker um, basically under layer for my bottom half. Um, this is a thinner. So again, I t do take a couple depending on what the weather is like and also depending on what type of year, time of year it is as well. Okay. Um, now also as well, we do have... Where's my hats? So very important is keeping the head warm. So I got this a while back, but any, any form of beanie winter hat, this, this is great. This is super warm. This is made of yak wool. If you're going on the Everest Base Camp Trek, highly recommend you get one of those. There's a shop in Namche Bazaar which does these, which are fantastic. And also as well, I happen to have one of these Evertrek neck buffs. So a big part of the trek is, is to keep your core warm, so your head, your neck and your chest. You don't want to be getting any colds, so I, I, you know, I try and keep that warm. Okay, so what have we got next? So these are, these are the crampons I use. They're Grivel, they're really good. Um, now these I, I wouldn't necessarily use uh, for the classic 15-day route. You, d you don't need these, but I just want to talk about them because I do take them at other times of the year when I'm going on other routes. So you're talking about Gokyo Valley, uh, potentially over Chola Pass. There's sometimes it's quite icy for a few hundred meters. You don't necessarily have to buy them and take them with you. You can, you can actually hire them in, uh, in Kathmandu. So if you just want to hire them, um, you know, if you're not going to use them winter climb, you don't want to spend all the money on them. You know, more than you, you, can, you can hire them out there. Another thing are these gaiters. Now these gaiters are great, again, if there's any snow, it just protects your bottom so you keep dry really. Um, yeah, so I don't, I'm not necessarily going to pack these, but they will come with me at certain times of the year. Um, my trusty little first aid kit tends to come with me. If, if any of you got really sensitive feet and you get blisters, um, you know, it's always good to take, take uh, you know, some tape and other things um, just to keep them from, from being sore. Okay, so what next? So I always take a decent head torch. Uh, this is my uh, Petzl. It's really good. I've used this, uh, you know, in the UK when I'm uh, sort of hiking at night. Um, that's great. So I, I always take that because you never know. Uh, you could be walking in the evenings and some of the routes you actually use, um, some of the terrains are a bit difficult. So there you go in. Okay, so next is, uh, this is my uh, power adapter. Um, you know, this is international. Um, universal one, but you, you know it's perfect for Nepal. Um, you know, at the tea houses you can charge your gear. Um, I, that always comes with me. Next to come with me is this baby. This is my uh, Anchor Power Pack. Charges my phone about seven or eight times. 
Perfect. So that always comes with me. That is good. Um, then I've got my trusty books, um, Trekking in Nepal, my map of Everest Base Camp. If I'm going to Everest Base Camp, it's just nice just to have. I mean, you can look it on your phone, but, you know, I'm old school. I love a good old old-fashioned map. My trekking pole. Now, some people trek with, with two poles. Uh, it does look after the knees, but I generally just trek with, with one pole. It's personal preference, completely up to you. Um, you know, it's worth getting out in the UK and, and trying that out first. Okay, next is these. Um, this, is the, uh, this is my hydration pack. So this would go generally in my, um, my day pack. But this comes with me too. So he goes in. And this is my uh, one and a half liter, uh, almost one and a half liter bottle. Um, this is my 750 bottle. Perfect if you're walking around Kathmandu or something. But this, just from a psychological point of view, having this bottle means I've got to drink two of these while I'm hiking in the day. Just means then I'm drinking three liters. I could drink a liter in the evening, a liter, liter in the morning. It just means you're getting that five liters, which is massively key when it comes to high altitude trekking and, and, and how you acclimatize too. Okay, um, now these, I do take some, some bags um, just to keep stuff in. So I do have these sort of uh, stuff bags, different sizes. It just keeps everything dry and separate. Um, sometimes my dirty underwear goes in there. Um, but they come with me and they go in. And then just some things like, you know, your, your toiletries. Obviously, you've got your sun cream, massively important. Also, as well, I do take aspirin with me. People ask why, but when you're at high altitude, your, your blood does thicken. I found when I'm hiking at a high altitude, I take an aspirin in the morning. I don't know, it just takes the edge off. Um, obviously, speak to your GP about that, but I generally take those. I also take um, like a vitamin C tablet and also antihistamine as well, just to, just to back up your body a bit, really, with vitamins. Um, so they go in. And that is it, pretty much. Let's not forget the bottle. So there you have it. There's all my gear that I'll be taking to every space camp. Um, it's, you know, I'm looking at about, probably about 12 to 14 kgs there, I think. Um, you want to keep it around 15 kgs. I do go up to 20 when I take my tripod. Uh, you know, if you're taking some jeans or clothes as well, that you're taking maybe just for in Kathmandu, you're relaxing. Um, but I tend to aim for about 15 kgs. If you do go over, it's not a problem. You can, um, you know, there are uh, additional charges when you're actually flying from Lukla to, uh, sorry, from Kathmandu to Lukla, but it's not excessive. It's sometimes less than a pound a kilo. So if you really do want to take everything, um, you know, there's, you, know, you, you, you can. So yeah, that's all the equipment that I use on the Everest Base Camp Trek. Um, I hope that's helped and you know if you've got any questions do let me know um, if you can please subscribe to this YouTube channel um, I'm regularly posting videos here just about the trek to Everest Base Camp um, but just so you don't miss out on these videos just make sure you subscribe and click on the little bell there just so you get our notifications